All right, turn in your Bibles to the book of Ezekiel tonight. And chapter 8. And last week we looking at verses 3 through 5 and the image of jealousy. He saw an image and if you remember he was taken by this likeness of a man by the hand and led to Jerusalem and to the inner court, to the gate of the inner court, the specifically the northern gate, where after seeing the glory of God, as he saw in the plain, which is as he saw by the river Kibar in previous chapters, he saw an image, an idol, all kinds of idolatry. He saw the image of jealousy. And it's called the image of jealousy because as they forsook God and began to practice idol worship and worshiping all the hosts of heaven as we saw last week, they provoked God jealousy. And we looked at the fact that God said that he was a jealous God. Uh, gave them the commandments to uh, that he was the Lord their God and they were to have no other gods before him and, uh, and they were not to make any graven images or likenesses unto anything in heaven above or in the earth beneath to worship it. They were not to take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. And over and over again he said, for, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. In one place he said, my name is Jealous. <laughs> and so Ezekiel sees this image of jealousy. I want to emphasize again, it's as he's in the spirit, he's transported, he sees visions of God. It, it's, it's a vision he saw. It's not physically being transported there from Chaldea to Jerusalem, physically. But he was taken there in the Spirit, by the Spirit of God, we said. But as will be made very obvious as we continue these chapters on the vision, but just uh, closing the vision, he says in chapter 11 of Ezekiel, in verses 24 and 25, he said, Afterward, the Spirit took me up and brought me in a vision by the Spirit of God into Chaldea. See, see it, it taking him in the Spirit, by the Spirit, to Jerusalem, and now when he's done with the vision in Jerusalem and the temple, he takes him again by the Spirit, and he takes, takes him by, in the Spirit, by the Spirit, back to Chaldee, to them of the captivity. So the vision that I had seen went up from me. Then I spake unto them of the captivity all the things that the Lord had showed me. So it's obvious, if you have any questions, any doubts, at all. It's obvious that it was just a vision. We would uh, say maybe a dream or something of that nature uh, now, although uh, in going back a couple weeks, we, we dealt with 
the thought that God doesn't speak to us that way today. We have the completed book, the completed revealed word of God. Everything God wants us to know is here. And through reading and study and in the work of the Holy Spirit, we learn what he ha has revealed uh, to us in his word. Tonight, continuing the thought of this image of jealousy and this view that he saw, the and maybe we ought to read those verses again so you can get every as much of the detail in, in mind as, as possible. Let's look at verse 3. And he put forth the form of a hand, and took me by a lock of mine head, and the Spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven, and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate, that looketh toward the north, where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoketh to jealousy. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel was there, according to the vision that I saw in the plain. Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eye now, the way toward the north. So I lifted up mine eye the way toward the north, and behold, northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry, the very setting up of this image. And think about that. Think about where it's set up. It's set up in Jerusalem, but it was set up at the, the gate of the inner court northward, which is, is the area where they offered all the sacrifices. And, and, and the priest offered their sacrifices, and so forth unto the Lord. The glory of God was there. The glory of God was visible. It was there in those sacrifices which were offered. And the, 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 the burning of those sacrifices and, and, and so forth, and the different instruments that, that as you entered and, and you saw there, and then as you went into the, the holy place and you saw those instruments, and the table of showbread, and then the high priest wants a year into the most holy place. So the glory of God was there. And this, this image of jealousy, this idol was set up there. This, the very setting of, of this image, let alone in the house of the Lord, was enough to provoke him to jealousy. Just the, the fact of them setting it up in, in, in the mountainside, in the high places, was enough to, to anger the Lord, was enough to provoke him to jealousy. But then they, they, they had the goal, they had the audacity to set it up in the house of the Lord, that place which was sacred to the Lord. That place which, which God said as we read last week in 2 Kings chapter 21 and, and, and verses 3 through uh, 7 or 8 there and, and we'll be turning there again tonight and, and, and looking at that, that, that place where God told David and Solomon it's my dwelling place it's my place my place of honor and they had the audacity to set up these images of idolatry and idol worship. And therefore it is called the image of jealousy. Let's, let's turn there uh, again tonight now to 2 Kings. 2 Kings and just uh, refresh your memories as to what we, we read over there. But to drive home the point again, he said in verse Verse 3 of 2 Kings chapter 21. For he built up again, that is Manasseh. 
And, and again, I ask you to consider who Manasseh was. Manasseh was, was raised by a godly father. A father who, whose ways were pleasing unto the Lord. And, and so much so were they pleasing unto the Lord that, that he, when he fell sick and, and, and was going to die, he asked of the Lord and the Lord extended 15 years to his life. Manasseh was only 12 years old when he began to reign. Did you catch that? Extended Hezekiah's life by 15 years. And Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign. That tells us that, that Manasseh was born after Hezekiah's sickness and after that he'd been healed in, in 15 years, and he'd, he'd been three years past that sickness when Manasseh was born and became king then 12 years later at 12 years of age. So his father was a, a godly man, and he would have been taught and instructed in the ways of the Lord. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord after the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. For he built up again the high places which Hezekiah his father had destroyed. And he reared up altars for Baal and made a grove as did Ahab king of Israel and worshipped all the host of heaven and serve them. You see, all the host of heaven he worshipped, as well as Baal, and as well as another. And he built altars in the house of the Lord, of which the Lord said, In Jer Jerusalem will I put my name. And he built altars for all the host of heaven in, in the two courts of the house of the Lord. And he made his son pass through the fire and observed times and used enchantment and dealt with familiar spirits and wizards, he wrought much wickedness in the sight of the Lord to provoke the Lord. I mean, witches and warlocks, I mean, he just honored them. And, and, and he, was un, he was an ungodly man. He was raised by godly parents. Again, remember a message a few months ago we preached. Just because your parents are godly doesn't, doesn't benefit you anything. It's whether you have the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart, in your heart or not. And whether you practice holiness, righteousness in the sight of God. I guess we need to finish reading this. All the hosts of heaven. Verse 6. And he made his son pass through the fire. We read that. And observed times and used enchantments and dealt familiar spirits, wizards. He wrought much wickedness in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. And he set a graven image on, of the grove that he had made in the house of which the Lord said to David and to Solomon his son, In this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. It's almost like, and I'm sure that we say this again, and we'll be saying it again, but it's almost like he said, in your face, God. I'll do what I please. <laughs> We've heard, I've heard men with my own two ears say, defy God. They defy the God of heaven and, and, and he can't even strike me dead. You heard that? 
Yeah, there was one man who died, what, five years ago, four years ago, whatever it was, named Steve Irwin. <laughs> Remember the alligator man? <laughs> and, and said not even God himself could kill him. God showed him, didn't he? That stingray put that stick right up through his heart. What a what an awful accident, people would say. What a what a catastrophe. He defied God. God showed him. He could he could get him any place, any time that he wanted. The placing of this image at the door of the inner gate. Where the people assembled. <laughs> Called the gate of the altar was open and willful defiance. In the face of God. It was utter, utter contempt for his law. It was utter contempt for the commandments of God. The Word of God. It was in defiance of His justice and His judgments. You see, they thought, and as we go on, we will say it again. They thought. <laughs> oh, God doesn't see. God doesn't know. God won't do this. God won't do that. <laughs> well, and God suffered long with them, didn't he? Handy. We saw in the last chapter, he said, my long suffering's done. Judgment's upon you. The day is now. The time is now at hand. This this setting up that image in, in the place where the people gathered in, in the gate of the altar. <coughs> Excuse me. The altar was to seduce. It was to corrupt those coming in too. It was to, to draw them away from worshiping God and draw them into the idolatry, into the worship of, of Baal, into the worship of even Molech. You see that offering of Manasseh's sons through the fire? That was what they did in offering their children to Molech, which was a god of the Moabites or the Ammonites. I, I might have that wrong now, but it's one or the other. Moabites or Ammonites. You see? And all the host of heaven. And all the host of heaven are, are going to be... I'm getting, getting ahead. A couple of verses ahead. But part of this vision that, that Ezekiel sees after the image of jealousy, and he, and he sees through a hole in the wall. And then and what he sees through that hole in the wall is these images of heaven and all kinds of four-footed beasts and the, the, the images of heaven scrolled on the wall inside. And what he sees... As he sees in there, he sees the priest worshiping those images. You see. But it was to seduce and, and to corrupt those that were coming into the courts of the Lord's house to, to don't, don't offer to the Lord, but, but offer to Baal. Offer to these, all these gods that we have here. You, you, you just take and you choose the one to your best liking so to speak. It was in an effort to turn those whose hearts weren't turned away to ter even turn their hearts away from the Lord. 
Turn with me to the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs, and we'll see here uh, Solomon uses the likeness of sin, the strange woman he uses here, which is, as we read these things about the strange woman, and, and yes, that's so about the strange woman, the, the whore, the, the prostitute, uh, that, it's so about her, but it's that way with all sin. All sin is, is looking to grab you and to get you. The book of Proverbs chapter 9 and, and verse 13 says, A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. For she setteth at the door. Where, where, was, where was this image of jealousy? <laughs> it was at the door. Sin lieth at the door. <laughs> she waiteth. Sitteth at the door of her house, on a seat in the high places of the city, to call passengers who will go right on their way. You see, that's what they, they, they had done. That's why they set up those images right there at the gate, right there at the gate of, to, the, to the temple. Right where people were coming and going. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. And as for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Stolen waters are sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But he knoweth not that the dead are there, and that her guest are in the depths of hell. They're in the depths of destruction. Listen, listen. Don't you know that sin looks sweet? Oh, it looks pleasant. It looks appetizing to the flesh. How many times are, are we tempted? How many times are we faced with sin? And we, we say, oh, it, it would be so good to do this. It'd be so wonderful to do this. And we ignore the consequences. We say, it is worth it. Until we're going through the consequences and then we say, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> you think? You think? Turn with me back to the seventh chapter. In verse 13, it says, So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, Isn't that the way sin is? It catches you. It kisses you. I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows, Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. <laughs> oh, sin says to us when we begin to indulge, yes, I have found thee. <laughs> I have succeeded in it. Verses 25 through 27 of the same chapter we read, Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Go not astray in her paths. Don't, don't give in to sin. Don't let your heart incline unto sin. Don't incline unto her ways. For she hath cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Many, well, we all right here, haven't we? We've been caught. 
We've been caught in sin. We've been drawn away of our own lust and enticed and brought forth sin. Turn with me to chapter 23 of the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 23 and look at verses 27 and 28. For a whore is a deep ditch and a strange woman is a narrow pit. She also lieth in wait as for a prey and increaseth the transgressors among men. Oh, sin. Sin's lying in wait. Just, just like this strange woman, just like this, this whore, just like this, this prostitute. Sin is lying in wait. And yes, yes, they placed those images there at the gate where, where it was easy for people to get to, easy to draw people away. And people succumb. They, why? They've seen everybody doing it. Everybody's doing it. It must be okay. You know, everybody's doing it, and there's no harm before following them. I can do it, too. Don't we think that way? Don't humans think that way? Oh, we've thought that way a time or two, haven't we? More than we'd like to admit, I'm sure. We have. Turn with me to the book of 1 Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 10. And you know these verses well. And we have referred to them many times. We've read them a few times. Chapter 10, verses 11 and 12. Now all these ha things happened unto them for examples, for a model, for patterns, for an example. And they are written for our admonition. They're written down, recorded for us. We have them today that we might read them and receive instruction from them. Upon whom the ends of the world are come. God's judgment came upon them. And in the writing of, uh, of this letter to the Corinthians, they hadn't, they hadn't cut, got over it yet. They still today have not got over it yet. They're, they're facing God's judgment for their idolatry, for their evilness, for their wickedness. For their image of jealousy, they're, they're facing the results of their provoking God to jealousy. Yeah. Verse twelve. Wherefore, because because these things are examples, and because they're written for our instructions, wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. <laughs> You think you're strong? You think you're, you're too strong to fall into this sin or that sin or another sin? I can do this and I'll be just fine. You don't know. I, I'm amazed. I was, I was raised, raised up in, in, in church and I was taught and taught by my parents. You, you, you and, and former pastors and stuff, you, you don't... You don't, as a man, you don't be alone with a woman who's not your wife. I see men 
throwing that out the window. For years they've been throwing that out the window. I'm, I'm strong. I won't fall. And I can tell you stories of, of thought they were good Christian men, good church members. Their lives had been changed. They had growing in the word and instruction. And, and wow, this lady's having a rough time in her marriage. And, and I just come alongside of her to help her. And after a while, next thing you know, she's getting a divorce and he's leaving his wife and they're leaving the state together. That's just one instance. <laughs> There's hundreds of instances like that, folks, where that happens. The Lord told us, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted to put that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear. Listen, there's no temptation that comes your way, no temptation to evil, no temptation to sin that comes your way, but what if you'll look to God, if you'll be in prayer and in the Word, that God will, del will deliver you. He said He will. He does. I know firsthand he does. He delivers you out of the temptation. Others here, I'm sure, have experienced it. Oh, that we would always experience it. You see, in chapter 16 of 1 Corinthians, Chapter 16 and verse 13 says, Watch ye. What does it mean to watch? Well, it means to give strict attention to. Pay attention. Watch ye. Stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Be strong. What's it mean? Be a man. <laughs> Listen, you women even, be a man. Be strong. Be a man in Christ Jesus. Be ma a man spiritually. All of us are to be that. We're to watch for temptation. We're to stand strong against it. We only do it in prayer and supplication and reading of God's Word. Turn with me to the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter 4. Verse 2 says, Continue ye in, continue in prayer. And watch in the same. There it is. Same word again. Same Greek word again. Pay attention to it. Give strict attention to it. Continue in prayer. What's the best way to watch? What's the best way to pay strict attention to the temptations and to sin and to things that come your way? By continuing in prayer. Be a prayer warrior. And then he goes on to, to, to invite and admonish them to be in prayer for them. That free utterance might be given to them to preach the gospel. Then we're admonished in the book of 1 Peter chapter 5. Verse 8, be sober. That is, be calm, be collected. In mind and in body. Be calm and collected. Be vigilant. There's, there's our word. 
And it's translated by the, the translators, King James translators, it's translated vigilant here, but it's the same Greek word that means give strict attention to. Watch. <laughs> Be on guard. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Because the devil is a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. Be in prayer. Watch. And remember that God has said, there is no deputation that hath taken you, but what is common to man. All men have, have faced it at one time or another. Every, every man, every woman here has faced temptations, these temptations at one time or another. Amen. Some of us here are testimonies of God's deliverance Amen. from that temptation. Some of us failed miserably. <laughs> you see? <laughs> but I'm here tonight to tell you again. To watch. Give strict attention to. Continue in prayer. And watch out for that old wily Satan and devil. Boy, listen, he's subtle. He's subtle. He's wise. He's wiser than you are. But we have Jesus Christ who's made unto us wisdom. <laughs> and he's not wiser than God, see. And God is able to deliver us from the temptation. Let us rely upon him. Let us not be as the Israelites were. Let us not fall into idolatry. As we said last week, anytime we exalt self, you get this? You get this, kids? You get this, parents? Anytime that we exalt ourselves, we're making ourselves an idol. We're putting ourselves above God. Oh, let us not be as the Israelites. Be guilty of succumbing to the sin and falling in. But let us look to the God of heaven and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Shall we stand? Be dismissed in a word of prayer.